with the accession of samudragupta we see that the gupta territory has significantly increased in size this was because samudragupta inherited the territory from his father chandragupta and also the lichavi territory from his mother side whose name was kumar devi before we talk about samudragupta's conquest i think it is important to first discuss the date of samudragupta's accession and when we look at the different history books we find that there is a debate on when samudragupta became the next gupta ruler so most of the time we see that there are two dates which historians give so the first date is 335 ad and the second is 350 ad now i am not going to go into the different arguments which has been provided by different scholars and i will stick to the date 335 ad but i think it is important to mention that there is a debate when it comes to the accession of samudragupta so the year is 335 ad samudragupta has ascended the gupta throne and with his ascension we see that now the gupta territory controlled the middle ganga valley and with the control of middle ganga valley we see that now the gupta also controlled the resources which this land has to offer now the importance of middle ganga valley in indian history up until now is that middle ganga valley was also the base of a previous empire that is the magadhar empire and i think this fact is quite important because in my view the guptas were aware of the fact that now they are ruling the territory which was earlier the base of an previous empire that existed some half millennium before their period and it would be not hard for us to imagine that when samudragupta became the new gupta ruler he also nursed a desire to conquer the territories which were earlier ruled by the magadhan empire and because of this we see that when we talk about the gupta realm the guptas had two option they could either advance in the east and conquer the lower ganga valley or they could campaign in the west and conquer the upper ganga valley now both of these region presented different challenges and it would have been quite hard for samudragupta to decide which way he wanted to go but the political situation of this period presented the solution in front of samudragupta what we see is that during this period the alliance between the vakatakas and the nagas which had existed during the reign of samudragupta's father chandragupta was now beginning to disintegrate the reason behind this disintegration between the vakatakas and the naga alliance has to do with the fact that the vakatakas had thought that after the marriage between a naga princess and the vakataka prince rudrasen they would also get the vakataka territory just like samudragupta got the territory of the lichavis but the vakatakas were not fortunate enough because the nagas refused to give their territory to rudrasen and this was the main reason behind this disintegration between the alliance of the nagas and the vakatakas the vakatakas in their turn also suffered a internal conflict we are told in the puranas that all the sons of pravarsen first became kings so it appears that during the end of pravarsen's first reign that is around the end of 3rd century ad or the start of 4th century ad we see that the vakatakas were fighting with each other so because of this political condition in the whole northern india it was quite easy for samudragupta to decide where he would campaign first he would campaign in the territories that lie west of the gupta realm so in the initial phase of samudragupta's conquest we see that samudragupta conquered the minor rulers that lie west of his territory and with this conquest now the gupta territory shared border with the nagas as we have seen earlier the relation with the nagas and the vakatakas has considerably worsened so that is why it became important for samudragupta to act first and the first thing which samudragupta did was to attack the naga territory because it was quite close to the gupta territory and the nagas were still a formidable power but apart from the nagas we are told that samudragupta also conquered two other players the first was achyut 
who according to most scholars ruled the territory of Ahichhatra region which is modern Bareilly and the second ruler which Samudragupta conquered was a Kota prince now this Kota was not the modern Kota of Rajasthan during this period the Kotas were a family who ruled the region of present day Delhi and Haryana so these three powers were the main powers that Samudragupta conquered in the first phase of his conquest of Aryavart now one question which has perplexed many historians is that where was the base of Samudragupta in this initial phase of conquest now in the Ilhabad Prashasti we are told that during these campaigns Samudragupta was situated in the city of Pushpa now the city of Pushpa is usually associated with Patliputra but if we look at the map, it does not make any sense that Samudragupta would choose Patliputra as his base during these initial campaigns because Patliputra was quite far away from these three powers which Samudragupta conquered during this period. But some historians have argued that the name Pushpa was not associated with the city of Patliputra only. In Zhuangzang's account, we are told according to Zhuangzang that the ancient name of the city of Kannauj or Kanyakubj was Kusumpura or Pushpapura. So if we believe that the city of Pushpa, which the Samudragupta Prashasti is talking about, is the same city of Kannauj, it makes much more sense because if we look at the location of Kannauj, it is quite reasonable to assume that Kannauj was the base of Samudragupta's initial campaign. Kannauj was equidistant from all these three major powers that Samudragupta conquered. So the final picture which we have in front of us is this. Kannauj became the base of Samudragupta's initial phase of conquest and one after other he conquered these three major powers in northern India. But this was just a beginning. For Samudragupta, the whole northern India or even the Ganga Valley remained out of bonds. Now if we look at the sources of this period, we find that the whole region of northern India or particularly the region around the Ganga Valley and the Ganga Valley itself is described as Aryavarth. And it was the conquest of this region which we call the conquest of Aryavarth by Samudragupta. Ilhabad Prashasti tells us that in this conquest of Aryavarth, Samudragupta annihilated or exterminated nine kings. With the extermination of these nine kings of Aryavarth, what we see is that Guptas now controlled the whole Ganga Valley. And with its conquest, the Guptas territory not only increased, but they had also access to the huge resources which the Ganga Valley has to offer. And these resources would be of great use for Samudragupta in his future campaigns. Now, about the future campaigns of Samudragupta, we will talk in a later video. But if you are interested in knowing how Samudragupta came to the Gupta throne and what kind of challenges he has to face, please watch this video. Thank you for watching.